América 2 y CBN, América Internacional, en la ciudad de Pretoria, la sede del Poder Ejecutivo, aquí en Sudáfrica. Y la magnífica vista que se domina desde la colina donde está ubicado el Palacio de Gobierno. La ciudad fue fundada el siglo pasado por Martín Pretorius, pero lleva este nombre en homenaje a su padre, Andrés, que ganó una batalla decisiva contra el reino Zulú. Podemos ver que esta ciudad, que prácticamente se está haciendo nueva cada día, tiene un centro comercial y financiero realmente impresionante. Ahí está la skyline, como dirían los americanos, la línea de rascacielos de Pretoria hoy. Este palacio de gobierno, obra también del arquitecto Baker, tiene hasta ahora... Cuatro torres que simbolizan las otras tantas provincias, ahora son nueve, de la Sudáfrica histórica. Y aquí se están preparando todos los actos de la transmisión del mando presidencial. Docenas de trabajadores rápidamente están preparando el escenario para esta ceremonia que contará con centenares de invitados oficiales, muchos jefes de Estado y de gobierno y delegaciones especiales. Así pues, figuras del más alto nivel mundial estarán aquí para convalidar que a mediados de mayo de 1994 nacerá efectivamente la nueva Sudáfrica. Ok, vení. ¿Sí? A la sede del Partido Nacional, que es el que justamente llevó adelante el apoyo a su candidatura, el presidente de la República de Sudáfrica, Frederick Leclerc, llega para ofrecer la última conferencia de prensa, seguramente antes de dejar el poder. Mr. Leclerc, Hello. I'm from Argentina. Uh, what's your uh, sign? Well, it is exactly what we've been working for. So it is for us a great sense of achievement. Es lo que hemos venido diciendo a cada paso. Esto es un gran éxito, un gran logro. The election is the end of the process which I promised and the beginning of a new era for South Africa. La elección estuvo dentro de lo que yo prometí, es decir, que significó un eh, gran paso adelante para el progreso de la nueva África. I'm convinced we will overcome the technical difficulties with regard to the election uh, and that we will get a certified result which will bring into power a government of national unity. Sí, este, además usted sabrá que ha habido algunas dificultades, pero creemos que no han significado nada verdaderamente grave y que esto sigue adelante para tener un gobierno verdaderamente representativo de, de unidad. And I'm confident about the future. I must take my seat. Okay, now only a, a few words about your meeting of today with Mr. Mandela. I will deal with that. Okay, at the thank you. El presidente de la República de Sudáfrica, Frederick Leclerc, en exclusiva para América 2 y CBN, América Internacional. Uncomfortable three minutes of silence. <laughs> is almost over bar the counting this has launched South Africa into a new era the hard campaigning is over we fought hard against each other now is the time 
to rise above our differences. Now is the time to start concentrating on how can we work together in the best interests of all our people. What do we need to do now to ensure that this new South Africa will be the success that we all want it to be? Many things are being said about the election campaign. Yes, irregularities definitely occur. I've had a meeting this afternoon with Judge Krichler, Mr. Mandela was also present, and we were fully briefed. We were told that the voting today in the six areas designated, in some areas uh, it was brisk, in other areas uh, there wasn't really that much of a need. We've been assured, and I've been assured, that complaints, specified complaints, will be dealt with effectively, that votes where complaints have been lodged will be kept separate, and that those votes will not be counted in if there is an adjudication that irregularities of a serious nature occur. Therefore, the procedures are available to ensure that malpractices can be discounted so that we can get a free and fair certification of the election and so that the will of the people can take its way and be implemented. I therefore am confident that we will get good adjudication and that we will have, at the end of the day, an announcement that this election, with its results, have been declared free and fair. And that is what we must be working for, ladies and gentlemen. That is the attitude which all parties should have. We must solve the problems which occurred. There were quite a number of them. And the rules and procedures make provision for those who have complaints to lodge their complaints and for those complaints to be adjudicated upon by an impartial body. I'm not a spokesman for the IEC. I have sympathy for them. They had a difficult task. But please don't direct questions at me to explain exactly what they had to do and what they did, please address those questions to them. As far as the National Party is concerned, we have reason for dissatisfaction at quite a number of places. But we are managing our dissatisfaction and our complaints within the framework of the rules, and we have been sufficiently assured that our complaints will be properly adjudicated upon. Well, firstly, you must distinguish when, you talk, when one talks about complaints between specific complaints during the whole process with regard to what happened at a specific polling station and a general complaint. Now, a controversy might arise with regard to the extra votes brought out today. In anticipation of such a controversy, those votes will be kept separate, will be counted separately, and will only be merged with the votes brought out during the originally prescribed period of the election, once any controversy which might arise have been solved. So <coughs> precautions have been taken. It is speculative at this stage to say whether there will be a controversy of a serious nature. Uh, the voting is still going on. In specific polling stations over the whole period where there is a controversy will also be dealt with in the same manner. In that sense of the word, uh, I think we must now allow the process to run its course and we must allow time to the IEC to act within the framework of the law which constituted it. An important aspect is the right of the IEC to count votes in or to discount votes as a method to solve the problem arising from complaints. In other words, 
it is possible for them to discount specific votes where they find that there were serious irregularities, but nonetheless assure that there can be certification of the election in general. It is true, I've been informed of that. Uh, it would be very difficult to actually trace it unless it took place on such a scale that one can, from large totals, make a deduction that it did happen on a large scale. At this point in time, there is no evidence that it took place on a, on a wide front and on a large scale, and uh, it would be difficult to trace isolated instances. But if there was a general pattern, then uh, one would be able to identify that pattern and that would create a very, very serious situation. Yes, please. Do you, do you have a microphone? Yes. Thank you. Reed Kramer from Africa News Service in the United States. If you could jump ahead a couple of days and tell us how do you foresee the process of choosing the cabinet to, to take place? What kind of meetings or discussions? Or if I had to reply in one word, it would be negotiation. That is what the Constitution stipulates. The result of the election will decide which parties have the right to participate. The first step, all parties getting more than 5% of the vote. The first step would be to ascertain whether all those parties want to avail themselves of that right. Chief Minister Butelezi, for instance, have indicated that, uh, that he will decide later whether, if he gets more than 5% of the national vote, whether he would like to be part of the government of national unity and actually hinted at maybe at this time a preference that he would rather like to be outside it and just to be a leader of an opposition party. Once that is ascertained, you know who have to negotiate with whom. And then the negotiation will... Uh, we'll start in all. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Se marcha así el presidente de Sudáfrica, el señor Frederick de Klerk, quien sin embargo todavía se da tiempo para respondiendo seguramente al pedido de algunos afiliados al Partido Nacional, tomarse una fotografía con unos pequeñitos que han ingresado de la mano de su padre a este lugar. Este salón quedará vacío, aunque probablemente volverá a ser usado para conferencias de prensa, no precisamente para la campaña electoral. Pero nos permitirá ver... Este salón quedará vacío, pero nos permitirá ver cómo el presidente que sale con este pequeñito en brazos puede entonces retirarse sin eh, ningún problema. Los letreros indican una posición muy dura en cuanto a los lemas para la campaña electoral. Pero, de todas maneras, él tiene fe, dijo, en un gobierno de unidad nacional. El presidente de la República de Sudáfrica, Frederick Leclerc. Tuvimos la oportunidad de dialogar con él. No queremos quebrar las normas establecidas, de manera que simplemente lo vamos a saludar en su partida. Ahí se va el presidente de esta nación. Muchos aseguran que será en el futuro gobierno el segundo junto al señor Mandela. Time, Mr. Mandela. Gracias. Gracias. Yeah, Do you remember nice. your visit recently, a few months yes, ago? Yes, with, with very happy memories. Yes. Tengo muy gratos recuerdos de la Argentina. I look forward, uh, hopefully, to visit your country again. Quiero mirando hacia adelante visitar nuevamente a su grandson. My grandson. He has my name too.
Same name as I am. Mi nieto y lleva el mismo nombre. Thank you very Thank much you. for all, Mr. President. Everything Thank you. the best and the best to the people of uh, Argentina. Y decía otra vez lo mejor para nosotros y para el gran pueblo de Argentina. Madame, la señora esposa del presidente. En esta nota exclusiva de América 2 y CBN, América Internacional, en Pretoria, la capital de la República de Sudáfrica.